Welcome to Beyond the Bottom Line. This evening, we're going to be talking to Cindy about allergies and stress and the impact on our wellness and performance. And as she's an expert in this, particularly about allergies, mast cell wellness, um, I invited her on the show because so many of us have got problems that we don't really know where they come from. So, Cindy, welcome to the show. It's a great pleasure to have you on with us. Thank you so much. It's a pleasure to be on. I'm just grateful for this opportunity and I'm excited. That's brilliant. But you know so much about it that it really is helpful. A lot of us have got allergies today and I think more and more of us are getting them and we don't really understand why or how and medically quite often we don't get simple results. Um, and also we're stressed and so allergies on top of the stress, it makes everything more difficult. But I know um, I talked to you before and we were talking a little bit about jobs and how much we want to really do well in our jobs, but we never have enough time. Um, we've got more and more responsibilities. And then we've got these little health niggles like the allergies, etc., that just seem to they really add to the challenges of performing well and feeling energized. And I know there's a significant link between mind and body. Um, yeah. And I see that in myself. You know, if I have a problem with one, it definitely affects the other. But the impact can be enormous. And most people just are not aware of quite how strong the link is. So can you start by explaining to us really what is this link um, and how it can affect us? Yes, absolutely. You know, it's so interesting because when I first became allergic to everything at age 15, there was so little known about allergies. There were, yeah. you know, there weren't um, products that I could just go and have a not, you know, a, a gluten-free item or a dairy-free food because so few people actually had food allergies. Yeah. And if you look at the world today, you know, they say that 60% of our population has some sort of an allergy that has 60%. developed. 60%? 60%. And oh that has God. developed over the last, you know, 10 to 20 years. Yep. And when we look at the ties to what's creating these allergic reactions, you know, yes, there's environmental factors for sure. Our environment is different. What we're putting in our foods are different. Um, but one of the most common links is our stress level yep. and the when we don't listen to our bodies and we just keep trudging through because as as humans our nature is to just keep striving for that goal yep. right i have this accomplishment i want to achieve and i'm going to just push it through it and get through it no matter what and oh i have this little ache or i have this little you know allergy that happened or oh i need to just shift my food and we just we make the accommodations along the way accommodating our illness and our our bodies yeah. really yell screaming at us right to say stop pause and listen to me and instead of stopping and listening we just make accommodations yeah. to fit that into our life so we get used to having a food allergy or having uh, you know an allergic reaction or a rash here or there as opposed to really stopping and trying to figure out why what's changed yeah. in our life to create it yeah. Um, and when we when you if you really dive deep and you notice the time period that an allergy has started, there's usually around that same time a link to some sort of high stress in somebody's life. And mm -hmm. that really isn't just about allergies. It's yeah. about many diseases. Right. Yeah. I, I call it a dis-ease of the body as yes. opposed to disease. Right. When we're in dis-ease, our body will scream at us a little bit. Yep. And then it's going to scream at us a little more. And if we continue not to listen, because we're pushing forward, we want to achieve that goal, we want to, you know, hit that next level of pay or of rank or whatever it is yep. that we're pushing towards, we're just in this, you know, go mode and not pausing to say, all right, body, what are you trying to tell me? Yep. And that is one of the biggest mistakes and, and one of the biggest blessings, to be honest, that I have um, been able to achieve in the last six years of my healing journey is really learning how to stop and listen to my body Yeah, because we are not, it's not a common 
um, process for us to stop and say, all right, what are you wanting me to know? Right. Yes. And what I found out from my own allergies, now just a tiny bit of background, you know, when I became allergic to everything at 15, I literally became allergic to everything, almost all chemicals, uh, most foods, yeah. all animal life and most plant life. Oh, really? Yeah. Yes. Oh I, my God, that's extreme. It was very extreme. And I lived that way, literally just accommodating that for 34 years until my body said, you it's enough I can't do this anymore and it yeah. began to shut down from all the allergic reactions and from all of the medications that I was taking so I didn't realize that yeah so yeah. that's why you got into all of this because basically you well you had no choice you had to find another solution I had no choice I had taken so many medications you know as humans especially humans that like myself started yeah. a business 12 years ago yeah and just, you know, driving that drive to continue that business and to build it to where you want it to be and yeah. to, you know, I'm going to achieve this. I just didn't listen for so yeah. long that all I would do was go take another medication, another pill, yeah. you know, something to, uh, to reduce the symptoms um, or get rid of them altogether. And in the end, that ended up affecting, you know, my liver and kidneys. So for me, all the medications I took drastically affected my organs. And oh, really? so six years ago, I went down this complete path where I stopped. I, I went down to part-time work. I chose yeah. me, yes. right? I chose yeah. me and I chose to heal. And the funny thing is, is once I really put some of these patterns into place to protect myself, to, to take care of myself, yeah. my business actually started to thrive even more. Oh, because, really? Yeah. Yes. Yeah. Because when we step back, you know, it's not really about working harder right? Yeah. It's about working smarter. And so exactly, yeah. when I knew that I, I was forced to choose me, yeah. I got to put some other um, processes into place yeah. where I worked a little bit less, but the business could still thrive. And um, so we just get caught up in this pattern of this is the only way to do it. Yes. But when we're forced to step back and do it differently, yeah. then we realize that a lot can happen. Now, my goal, especially for your listeners who are just these hardworking individuals yeah. that are, you know, really committed to their careers and their goals, yeah. you know, what I say is that if you're suffering from allergic reactions, if you are having constant allergic reactions, and let's say you started with one three years ago, yeah. and then another one all of a sudden is showing up and another one is showing up, that is because your body is trying to tell you something. And oh, that's interesting. I mean, I'm, I, I'm desperately trying to think when I had an allergy to this and when I had an allergy to that, because yeah. I've had a few. Um, oh. And yeah, I can think of one was um, when I started a new business and developed one. One was I when I moved countries, moved jobs, move everything. And yeah. very interesting. But yes. yeah, well, I've, I've, I've never wondering. thought deeply on that. But now yeah. that you say it, there must be so many people in this situation and we're just not aware. We're not aware. And I wasn't aware for 34 yeah. years. And for me, it all tied back to childhood trauma. Yeah. So, you know, that's not going to be the case for everybody. It's not yeah. always about a big trauma that they had. For me, that's why my allergies were so extreme. Yeah. But allergies in general or mast cell disorder. So do you, yeah. want, do you understand mast cell? Do you want me to explain? A little no, bit? I have absolutely no idea. So okay. <laughs> treat me like an idiot. Explain what it is. <laughs> okay. Um, so mast cells are in uh, under our skin throughout our body. Yeah. And if you, let's say you had a bug bite and you yeah. and your little area around that that you know spider bite or whatever it was swelled up. Yep. Those are your mast cells doing what they're supposed to do. Okay. Ah, so it's a very okay. layman term. So it's protecting you from having that bug bite go in and affect the rest of your yep. body. Okay. So it's kind yep. of I you know isolating the yes. bug bite and the um, allergic reaction. Yeah. With people that have mast cell disorders, they have either too many mast cells in their body. Yeah. So that's called mastocytosis where they just have so many mast cells in their body that they just, they're not, they're never, it's never acting correctly. Right. Yes. They're, they're not able to do just the job that they were meant to do. Yep. There's also mast cell activation syndrome, which is what um, the Western medicine says, you know, has diagnosed me with. And yep. that's basically 
overreactive mast cells. Yeah. So I have the right number of mast cells, but they're constantly being triggered. And for the longest time, if I went outside, if I went in the wind, if I was in humidity, if I was around an animal or, you know, ate a certain food or somebody walked by me with perfume, all of these different things would trigger those mast cells to go crazy in my body. Really? Yeah. Yes. And so that's what a mast cell disorder is. So a lot of people that suffer from allergies actually have some sort of a mast cell disorder. It's just so new. Yeah. That a lot of people don't really understand that. Yeah. And I, I mean, I didn't for 34 years. I didn't have it. one doctor tell me that yep. until one day a doctor said, have you ever been checked for mast yeah. cell disorder? And I had never even heard of it. Yeah. So it's, you know, it's something to look at if you have a constant, you know, if you're having a lot of allergic reactions and you can't really seem to understand why. Yeah. If we go back to stressors, and, you know, our, the workforce, when we're under a lot of stress, our bodies release cortisol. Yes. Cortisol releases antihistamines. <clears throat> yep. I mean, histamines, sorry. Cortisol releases histamines in the body. And that's why the tie to allergic reactions and stress, that's where the two tie together. Okay. Yeah. And so when we're under a lot of stress, we're releasing a lot more histamines. Yep. Therefore. And that kicks it all out. off. Yes, allergic reactions. Oh, right. And so by calming the nervous system and learning to understand what's creating these allergic reactions as opposed to taking a pill to stop it, yep. you actually can get to the underlying answers yep. behind your allergic reactions and heal it so that you don't have to suffer. Oh, right. And also it avoids you having to take loads of medication, which potentially could give you other reactions or other things like that. Oh, that's very interesting. So if we manage to get back to finding out, to, to listening to our stressors, when yeah. we're very busy professionals, um, and particularly busy business professionals, um, our brain is definitely somewhere else. We're not focused on that. We're running around like crazy. So what can we do? How can we listen to our body better? so that we can manage our stress better and our pressure and that way try to improve it. Because I'm sure a lot of people will be really interested in the explanation and thinking, ah, oh, shit, okay, this is doing it, this is doing it, etc. But then wow. from understanding to actually doing something constructive, it's more complicated. So what do you recommend that we can do to help ourselves and to get a positive impact that we're really going to see the difference? Yes. I know I'm asking you a lot. <laughs> no, it's, it's such a great question. And, you know, the, the great thing about our bodies is we're all very unique. Yeah. The one thing that I can say that is consistent for everybody is we all get to, I like to say get to, as opposed to have to, because it's a gift when we get to the point that we actually do this for ourselves, Yeah. but we get to take a pause. So, and, and really just slow down sometimes and, and sit in meditation and listen. Yeah. And it's a lifestyle change. Yes. You know, it, you know, I know you're saying like, we're busy, you know, um, employees are busy, you know, um, business owners and your listeners are, you know, really going after their goals and their dreams and, yeah. and, and we have to learn to pause, yeah. right? We, ha we get to learn to take a moment, take a few minutes every day and stop yeah. and listen, because yeah. if we're constantly living in the future, we're not focusing on what's happening to our bodies right here, right now. And this yeah. really goes for everything, right? Yeah. If we want to lose weight, if we, whatever we want to do, to be a little healthier. It's yes. all about being in the moment and pausing and listening and seeing what we can do and making those small life lifestyle changes yep. that will help us to achieve that. And it's a little harder for busy individuals that are not used to slowing down. Yep. But in reality, that is what has to be done. That's yes. what you get to do for you. It's a gift to give yourself that opportunity of slowing down. So when I first started practicing listening to my body. Um, I use an app called Insight Timer. I just started meditating. Me too. Do you? I love <laughs> yep. it. It's a great one. And they have so many great, you know, individuals that have put the most beautiful meditations on there. Yep. I would start with that so that it would help calm my mind. 
Yeah. And then just go into, let, let's say for me, a lot of the allergic reactions are rashes. Yes. And so I would say, I would focus on an area of my body. What are you trying to tell me? Yeah. And when you can calm your body down enough, you will get the answers and you will start, mm-hmm. it, your subconscious starts telling you what it's trying to tell you physically, yes. right? Because yeah. an allergic reaction to me is nothing more than your body saying, hey, I'm here, pay attention yeah. to me, I'm trying to tell you something, right? Yeah. And he is to figure out what it is it's trying to tell you. And yeah. that's where you've got to sit in that quiet and meditation. Um, another tool and tip would be to find somebody that does muscle testing. So oh, right. yeah. muscle testing is a great way to understand what's happening with your body. Are you familiar with muscle testing at all? Not really. No. Okay. So muscle testing is basically those that have learned how to do it properly. It's, it's, it's a beautiful tool and a beautiful gift. And so you've, you've a lot of chiropractors and practitioners, natural practitioners, functional doc, Western doctors yep. will know how to do it and they can ask your body specific questions yep. and, and you'll, and your body answers them. So they do it by either they'll push on your arm. You can, yes. you can Google it. Even they'll push down on your arm and your body will give them answers or they'll use your fingers. Uh, my practitioner, he uses my neck. And yes. he'll ask a question yeah. and the way my body responds, it's giving the answer. And it is hundred percent accurate. I mean, in my experience, it is, if you have somebody really good that knows how to read people through the, um, yeah. uh, you know, muscle testing. Did, does it have any kind of link at all with acupuncture and the pressure points? It's similar to that only it's really your body's, um, energy field sharing yes. an answer. And so yep. it's not so much a specific pressure point yes, as it is your entire body giving a message yeah. through your energetic field. That so it's a natural way to ask questions and yeah. I can't wait to learn how to do it myself. I've tried, you know, we, it's a little harder to do it on ourselves because our yes. ego gets in the way, right? Yes. <laughs> so we kind of, it's like, I've tried over and over again, but if I'm really stuck and I have something going on with my body and I can't figure it out by sitting down and quiet and asking, I'll go to my practitioner and then he'll ask questions. Okay. And we just went through that actually um, yeah. just last week and we were able to get the answers that I needed. And then I had the solution that came with the answers. So that sounds really interesting yeah. because I used to have acupuncture regularly because I was very lucky that I lived next to a Chinese acupuncturist, Chinese from China, you know, the real thing. Right. Um, so his was really prevention. Um, and he was excellent because he'd say, okay, I'm doing a different thing today because I feel um, just the sense he got was, yeah. or from feeling pressure points and the reaction from that, he said, no, 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 I think, we need to work on this because I can feel there's a tension or a blockage coming. Um, And it was amazing. Absolutely amazing. I used to go to him regularly for, I don't know, two and a half years or three years. Um, I was never ill ever. And it was superb. So things like that. I'm, I'm going to have a look to see if I can find one of the muscle testing practitioners near me because it sounds really interesting. I think when people can feel the energy, um, it makes such a difference. It really helps. Yeah. Finding those gifted practitioners to me is key to anybody's wellness, right? They're out there. They're all over the place. And it's just finding someone that's in tune enough and intuitive enough to read you and to be able to, you know, understand what's going on with you. Yep. And so, um, you know, yeah, if you can find somebody that's in your area, that would be fantastic. Oh. I do a process called NAET. Yeah. And it's Nandun Depod's allergy elimination treatment. And right. <laughs> really effective. They use muscle testing to see what I need to des- be desensitized to. And yeah. then they desensitize my body one product or one item a week. Um, for, you know, each week. So I, I still, yeah. I'm still in the process of doing the desensitization yeah. and I'm just about done. Oh, wonderful. Very effective. And they use muscle yeah. testing, but there's a lot of different 
you know, modalities out there. Yes. Finding what's in your area. Yep. What fits, fits with your time frame, with your budget, you know, yep. all of that. But yep. sitting and really just start doing that initial asking your body and yep. seeing if you can get the answers yourself is really key. Yep. But it's practice, right? It takes yes. really sl- being willing to slow yourself down yep. enough to take that time for you. Yes. And that's, that's one of the hardest things as humans. Yeah. We're either working or giving to others, right? Taking yep. care of our spouses and our children and, you know, our fam- extended family members and friends and uh, taking that time to take care of me yes. and you is, is really, for some reason, just such a difficult thing, especially yep. for busy business professionals. So. Yeah, yeah, definitely. And their mind is sort of in overdrive and they've got bosses and people like that saying, wah, 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 you've got to do this. So even if they want to, they're, yeah. it's almost like they're having an internal fight. Well, I want to do it. I know I should do it, but I've got so much pressure from the boss, from the client, from whatever. So, yeah. okay. So you say to start off with, you recommend just pausing, um, just pausing. meditating, or if people don't like the word meditating, a quiet moment for thinking to just free your brain of stress. Yes. We are filled with no, our lives are filled with noise. Yeah. But the moment we wake up, often we're putting on the news or the radio, then we're talking to people all day long and then we're coming home and talking to family and we're turning the TV on or the radio again at night. And then we're shutting down and going to bed. Yes. And so that gift of quiet silence is, tremendous when it comes to our nervous system. And if we don't offer ourselves that we're just on this constant stage of fight or flight in a way, right? Where you're never, ever, ever calm, allowing your sympathetic nervous system to be calm, right? Yeah, exactly. Constantly fighting yourself and fighting the world and the noise around you. So we can't know what's going on with ourselves if we're not willing to get away from the noise for a little bit and pausing. Yeah. Um, to listen. So yeah. it's, it's very important. And I, I want to also say that people that suffer from a lot of allergies, if you think about stress, there's individuals in this world that deal with a lot of depression, anxiety, yeah. right? Yeah. And it's their stressors show up as more mental, emotional, right? Yes. For people with a lot of allergies, your stressors show up as a physical yeah. manifestation as, a, yeah. as opposed to a mental manifestation, right? Yes. So uh, allergy is nothing more than, um, you know, a depression or an anxiety. I, I used to think I had no anxiety. Yes. And I learned that the major I wouldn't say the majority, but a lot of my allergic reactions were actually my body, my anxiousness. Yep. And yep. it was just when I would get anxious and still when I get anxious today, I break out in a rash. Yep. And so it's learning what our, why our body's responding a certain way and yep. how we can manage that. Yeah. And for me, it was sitting in a lot of silence and really calming my whole body because yeah. I had so many years of this, you know, yes. these yeah. allergic reactions. But for most people, it's smaller allergic reactions. It starts that way. Yep. And if you can stop it ahead of time, yeah. then you're going to avoid it getting worse and worse and worse and worse. Yeah, definitely. No, that's so important. So, and I know uh, what you're saying about silence. There are so many people now that the minute they wake up in the morning, they put the radio on or they put the TV on. Um, so there's constant noise. Um, I can't do that. I go crazy if someone puts the radio on early in the morning. I like my breakfast in silence, peaceful, oh. quiet, so good. <laughs> um, but also because I've been very busy recently and I have felt everything starting to get eh, again. So yeah. um, this weekend I was out doing a lot gardening helping my son and his allotment so in nature you know doing creative physical things and then this morning even though I'd got a lot of work I thought I feel so much better from that I am going to make absolutely sure I go out for a break for a walk Um, and instead of thinking about what I needed to do or what my project was or what client I had to phone I thought I'm going to listen to the birds so I I live next to a park which is great so there's nobody it's really peaceful and I just spent about 25 minutes walking around 
just listening. And there weren't bird song the whole time because it's still quite cold. But, you know, there were certain little bits and just having the little bit of noise and then the piece and then another little bit. My God, I felt a completely different person when I came back. So you saying that now really resonates because obviously I did the right choice without even thinking about it. But I think, yeah, yeah, it must make such a difference, particularly if you can do it during a busy day at work or a busy project or maximum impact and stress and pressure. It's great. That's actually the most important time to do it. Yeah. Because we are more effective. If you think about how you felt when you came back from that, yeah. You're going to be more effective in your day yep. because you gave yourself that gift of yep. that walk, yep. right? We, when we're sitting in the moment, like you're listening to the birds, you know, every morning I take a walk or most mornings I take a walk on the harbor. Yeah. It's amazing to me how many people I see that are walking with their headphones or music. I know. Oh. Right. And they're not sitting in the moment of what they're mm. experiencing. Yep. And when we give ourselves that gift of being in the moment and experiencing the clouds and the you know, whatever's around us, right? The singing birds, yeah. for me, it's the water and the yeah. boats coming by and the kayakers and just observing all of that. That is so calming and peaceful. It just yeah. takes me into a complete calm yes. that I can start my day with. Yeah. But when you start your day with anxiousness because you just listen to the news yeah. or, you know, you're already anxious, it's just that anxiety is going to just get more and more and more throughout yeah. the day. Yeah. And that is why it's important, like you said, to also step away. Yes. You know, and that's probably one of the hardest things that we do is yeah. learning to step away. Even for myself, I recognize, okay, I suddenly have a headache. And how long yeah. have I had that headache that I wasn't paying yeah. attention to it? Yeah. Or my back's aching because I've been sitting yeah. in this chair too long and I haven't stood up to walk around. Yeah. Or maybe I haven't drank enough water, even though that my glass is sitting right here. I'm so engrossed <laughs> in the computer. I haven't even picked that glass of water up to drink. Yep. So it's, <laughs> It's being conscientious about all of those things that our bodies need and they're begging for us. You know, we are only here because we have this vessel. That's the only reason we're here. And uh, so really listening to it and paying attention to it is a gift and a a blessing for, you know, anybody that's willing to do that to take the time. Yeah. And it just takes practice. It's just like everything else in life. It takes practice. It takes setting that alarm and forcing yourself to do it. For the longest time, I set my alarm every 40 minutes to take a drink of water because I was not drinking the water. Now I do it more often. So if I'm sitting at my desk and I'm just not, and I find myself not drinking it, I'll set that alarm to force myself to drink the water. That's a good idea. Yeah, I never thought of that. Yeah, Yeah. Yeah. there's a lot of little things we can do. It's just stopping long enough to go, what are my biggest challenges? Yes. And where can I implement little things? Yep. We, you know, we're not asking you to take away your, your, your half a day, right, yes. of your work. It's yep. just little things that can make very big differences for you. Yeah. Well, that's amazing. I, one of the things you've said that really has hit me is saying that basically it's the physical manifestation instead of the mental manifestation yep. of everything. Because I have some people close to me who've got depression and anxiety because of work and things like that and then I've got other people with allergies um, and the people with the allergies definitely do not believe it's because of their stress and the problems they've got but I can see the stress and the problems that they're under Um, but it's interesting the the two different channels but anyway Cindy I know we're nearly out of time I just want to ask you one final piece of wisdom or key strategy that you think we should keep in mind to help us going forward? I think the most important thing to think of if you're suffering from allergic reactions, whether it's chronic, whether you've just started having allergic reactions out of nowhere, is to be willing to take the time and look at the time period of when your allergy started and what was going on in your life at that time. Yeah. connecting the two. I spent 34 years thinking my trauma had nothing to do with any of my physical ailments. Yeah. I thought I got away with yeah. the trauma because I was happy. I was joyful. I, I never, you know, felt emotional yeah. distress. Yeah. But in reality, my body said, oh no, I'm going to protect you from the world by making you allergic to the world. Yes. So 
it's really looking at why you're having it and being willing to look at the underlying answers behind mm -hmm. anything that's going on in your body. But yeah. in today we're talking about allergies, but it really that's true for anything going on, yeah. right? And it's taking that time to sit down and say, okay, what's the link? Yeah. Because most often, I'd say 90% of the time, there is a definite link between a stressor in your life yeah. and the physical ailments you have. Yeah. Yeah. Oh, it's fascinating. Brilliant. Thank you very much. So I'm sure there are going to be some people who want to get in contact, find out more, read more. So how can they get in touch with you if they want to find out more about this? Yes, absolutely. Thank you for asking that. I can be reached at theunderlyinganswers.com. Yeah. And um, that's probably the best way. Just go to my website and I have yep. a monthly newsletter you could sign up for and uh, reach out to me through my website at the Brilliant. underlying answers. Okay, I will put all the links. If you send me the links, I'll put them on the page as well. But anyone okay. who was running while they were um, listening, they now <laughs> know how to contact you. So that's great. Thank that's you very much, Cindy. I really appreciate you coming on the show. It's been brilliant. Thank you for having me. It's been so fun. Everyone, you've been listening to Cindy Costley from underlyinganswers.com. I hope you found everything as interesting as I have. I know I'm going to change some of my habits immediately. So <laughs> thank you all for listening in and we will see you again next week. Take care. <laughs>